And thanks for coming today and for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. As she said, my name's Autumn Payon. I've been interested in all things fitness and nutrition since a very young age. I remember doing aerobics in like fourth grade. So <laughs> um, I graduated in 1999 from the University of Minnesota Duluth with a degree in exercise science. And I've been working as a fitness coach at Curves um, since 2001. I was owner of the Staples Curves for 15 years and I've been um, owner of the Little Falls Curves for the last seven years. So, um, you can say this is my passion. It's not just a job for me. I look forward every day to helping each one of my clients achieve health and fitness. And I'm always happy to answer questions if you see me on the street or at the club. So, um, I'm certified by the Cooper Institute and trained by Curves and the Cleveland Clinic in the Curves Circuit, weight management, and in behavior change, which is a really important thing for um, making all this work together. I'm just really excited to be here today to talk to you specifically about strength training, protein intake, and balance. So those moves we talked about, they're just going to be a few balancing moves, so don't let that scare you, okay? So Curve's mission is really just strengthening women to live healthy and active lives. And although initially our workout was specially designed for women, the information that I'm going to give you today applies to everyone. So don't shut off if that wasn't you. <laughs> um, our company was started in honor of our founder's mother who passed away at an early age due to um, possible preventable health conditions that may have been improved through um, weight management and exercise. What is our Curves workout like? So our Curves workout is what you would call circuit training. Has anybody done circuit training before? Good, awesome. Circuit training kind of combines it all. During the workout, we alternate between hydraulic strength training machines and aerobic exercise. We also have specialty classes. So during our classes, we still utilize the strength training machines because that's a very, very important part. Um, but in between the strength training machines, we do prescribed moves and they're led by a coach, and the moves are determined by which class that we're doing at the time. Some of the classes that we have include dance, yoga, tai chi, boxing, balance, the curve circuit with Zumba, and walking. And then there's also certain classes where we tar target certain areas of the body, like your arms, your abs, your legs. One of the great things about our facility is that there's always a coach there, so we don't have keyless entry. There's always going to be a coach there when you come in to work out. And our membership also includes something really important, which is your monthly coaching session. During your monthly coaching session, we evaluate your progress from the prior month, and we determine where we can make changes to help you meet your goals in the upcoming months. So a complete workout includes five components. And so whether you're coming into our facility and working out or whether you're planning your own workouts at a different gym or at home, it's very important to remember to include all five components of these workouts. So the first component of the workout is the warm-up. So this is where you start out a little slower and it prepares your body for exercise by gradually bringing up your heart rate and providing blood flow to your joints and muscles and kind of loosening them up and getting you ready to work out. The second part of a complete workout is cardio. So what's the most important muscle in your body? Your heart, your heart right? So we, need to, we can't see it, but we definitely need to work it. It's important to raise your, target heart, raise your heart to its target heart rate zone and keep it there for a period of time in order to condition your heart. So cardio is a very important part of the workout. The third component that every workout should include is strength training. Every major muscle group should be worked and the sets and the repetitions that you work it at is determined by your goals. So if people want to get nice, great big muscles, they lift a very heavy weight um, just a few times, but if they want to get just tone and definition and basic strength to do daily activities, then you lift a lower weight more times. So that's something to think about too when you're at home if you're doing any of this at home. Um, next we have the cool down phase of the workout and the cool down is kind of just the opposite of the warm up you are bringing your heart rate back down slowly, your blood pressure back down to 
um, closer to pre-workout levels. So that's really important too. Not just don't just stop when you get done working out. Especially don't just stand there with your knees locked or whatever. It's really important to include that cool down period. Then there's something that people kind of forget about unless they're participating in a certain class, and that's our last component of a complete workout, which is stretching. So you should stretch after every workout, and the reason that we stretch after the workout is because we want to stretch a warmed up muscle. You don't want to just stretch right away and um, pull too hard and tear your muscles. So that's important to think about. Even if you were to do stretching after your warm up component of the workout, it would be better than just starting um, straight with stretching. So that's very important to remember. Um, actually, people that stretch have a 19% greater strength gain than people that don't stretch. So that's very important to remember too. It's not something that to just hurry through or to skip. So how does strength training work? So you guys might be thinking about, um, you know, barbells, dumbbells, weights, but how does it really work for your body? And that's kind of the main focus of our talk today. Many times when I'm consulting with people, I find out they've done a lot of cardio in the past. Like they walk, which is awesome. They ride bike, they swim, but not everybody's done a lot of strength training. And oftentimes it's just because people don't really understand the importance of strength training in their life. So how does it work? In short, it works on the overload principle. You have to lift a weight or resisting force stronger or heavier than what you're used to. This stress on your muscles will cause tiny tears in the muscle, which stimulates the cells to release molecules that cause your muscles to grow and repair. This growth is made possible by our body using amino acids, which come from our body's breaking down protein. So protein plays a very important role, and it must be consumed to build muscle. Unfortunately, as we age, we often desire protein less, and our bodies become less able to break it down, so it becomes even more important. Some good sources of lean protein include like low-fat cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, fish, chicken, lean cuts of meat such as loin meats, um, beans, and protein supplements. So at Curves, we offer three protein supplements of various kinds. Just because if you think of like the starches or carbohydrates that are in the world, there's probably hundreds of food items you guys could think of. But with protein, there's basically just those groups that I mentioned. So sometimes it's, it's okay to supplement with something just to add a little variety or ease of getting that protein into your, into your diet. These products that we have are not just available to our members, but to anyone who wishes to stop in and purchase them. This is a company called Vade Nutrition. These two bodybuilders, this couple, they had this great idea for convenient, um, quick, high quality protein. And so they went on the show Shark Tank and I think they were awarded like $250,000 to grow their company. And so I'm gonna show you how one of their protein shakes works. And I wanna point out that this is high quality protein. It's whey isolate, which is great for building muscle. And the reason it's so great is because um, it's refined. So whey is obviously a dairy product, but it's refined so it doesn't have lactose in it. So the fat, the sugar or carbohydrate, and the lactose have been um, refined out of it, and so it's a lot easier for people to digest. So it's a very high quality protein. But still, sometimes we think about blenders and protein shakes and things like that and the mess they make. So this is a very fun and easy way to get protein in your diet. So they have two flavors chocolate and vanilla, and they come in these really cool dissolvable protein scoops, just like this. And you literally just plop it in your cup. Put the cover on, and shake. There's just water in there? There's just water in there. You can mix other things with it, but it, it's very flavorful and it does not need anything else mixed with it. Um, it's actually the best protein shake I've ever had. And I'm not going to have you taste it, but I will pass it around so you can um, get a look at it and uh, smell it and, and see what you think. But as you can see, this is a great product for um, bringing in the car with you and other, other places like that. I have seen a copycat product um, to this. 
but it uses whey concentrate. Whey concentrate does not have the lactose fat and carbohydrates taken out of it, so it's pretty cool. I'll just open this up and pass it around. You can smell it and look at it. <laughs> Did you put vanilla in that one? This one is vanilla, yep. So our second product is collagen, and that's also a protein. Did you guys know that? Did you know collagen was a protein? And it is in your um, goodie bag that I handed out. There is 10 grams of collagen in each one of those sticks. And not only is it good for your muscles, but it's good for your joints and your hair and your skin and your nails. Um, a large part of our body is actually made up of collagen. So you guys can take that home with you and you mix it with a bottle of water. I just usually drink like down to the label of the water bottle and then I plop that in. That one does take like two to two minutes to fully dissolve. So you will see a few floaters in there and after two minutes they'll be gone. It's very passion flavored and it's delicious. So our last product is really cool because it takes those two things that I just explained to you and combines it all into one. So we have the whey isolate protein in here and the collagen. And so it's also very convenient. One of the great things about this is that it does not need refrigeration. So you can use some of it, stick it in your purse, and keep it up to two months after opening it without refrigeration. And it's really good for those days where you just think I haven't had any protein today. So for muscle building, I personally would recommend a half a gram per pound of your body weight. If, have you ever heard of bone broth? Have you heard of people making bone broth? Yeah. It's, it's very popular right now. And basically that's what that is, except it's the bone marrow. berry flavored. It's collagen. So collagen is part of our a protein that's in the body and as it's extracted from the, the bones. No, 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 it's, it's bovine. It says on the back, hydrolyzed bovine protein. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little, now that we know what strength training is and we know that you need protein for strength training, let's talk a little bit about um, the benefits of strength training in case you're not convinced that you should do it yet. The first benefit that we want to talk about is that strength training can help you manage weight for a lifetime. As you strengthen your muscles, you'll burn extra calories, not just while you're doing the workout, but all day long. Muscle is known as lean body tissue, and it burns more calories than fat. So you can consider your toned muscles fat burners. So that's really exciting. The muscle that you build in that short period of working out will help you all day long. The second benefit to strength training is that it will make your entire body stronger. Now this sounds just normal, but um, you have to think about what that helps you do. As a result, it makes living and moving throughout the day much easier. It includes things like your ability to lift grocery bags, um, play with kids and grandkids, walk upstairs, and get in and out of your car. I know that's a, big, that's a big issue too, like different types of vehicles that are easier to get in and out of, so strength training will help you do things like that. Benefit number three, strength training can help you lose more fat. So research shows that strength training can have a positive effect on preventing increases in body fat if associated with a healthy nutrition program. So it's not just working out, it's, it's being careful to watch what you're consuming too like that healthy lunch we just had. That was great. Benefit number four, weight training reduces your risk of diabetes. Now that's really great. Adult onset of diabetes is a growing problem and research indicates that strength training on a regular basis can improve glucose utilization. Now you guys know that's important too, controlling your um, blood sugar and so strength training can actually help your body use the glucose more effectively, not just burn it off. Lots of benefits to strength training. Benefit number five, stronger bones. That's one thing we all think about too, right? At about age 21, the body has established all of the bone mineral you'll ever have unless you strength train. Strength training is a powerful tool against osteoporosis. One in two women age 50 or older will break a bone due to osteoporosis. 
Here are some ways that you can reduce your risks. Number one, regular weight-bearing exercise. What's another name, word for that? Strength, Strength training. training. Woohoo! You guys are getting this. Um, recommended daily allowances of calcium and vitamin D, avoiding smoking and excess of alcohol, talking to your doctor, having a bone density test done, and there's also medications if needed. So strength training is very important to prevent osteoporosis. Benefit number six, strength training can help protect your most important muscle, your heart. It can fight heart disease. It can improve your cholesterol profile and blood pressure. According to research, of course, your exercise program should also include cardiovascular and flexibility training, which are two of those components we talked about at the beginning, right? The five components of a workout, cardiovascular and flexibility in addition to the strength training. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death globally. One in four deaths are caused by heart disease. Annually, 7.4 million deaths from coronary heart disease, 6.7 million deaths due to stroke can be managed or prevented by lowering body weight, reducing blood pressure, lowering bad cholesterol, and increasing good cholesterol. Now I would say those are some really good reasons to include exercise as part of your daily routine. Benefit number seven. Evidence shows that strength training is beneficial for people living with pain from arthritis as strong muscles help protect and support the joints. So as you build muscle, it actually stabilizes your joint, your knee joint, so it's not flopping all over your hips, and it actually helps um, them rotate correctly and prevent the pain that you, would, that you would have or help the pain that you would have from arthritis. Also, it helps um, lubricate the lining of your joints, so it's very important. Benefit number eight. Did you guys know you were athletes? Think about the things that you like to do. Are you a gardener athlete or are you a walking athlete? We're all athletes. Walking, cross country, skiing, cycling, whatever your sport is, strength training can increase your proficiency and reduce your risk of injury. So a lot of times, it's not that we couldn't do an activity anymore, right? But we start to think we can't because we're kind of scared of what might happen if we do it or maybe we've tried exercising and we have, you know, something happened and then we're afraid to do it anymore, but actually strength training can help that those, those unfortunate side effects of exercising um, be less likely to happen by stabilizing you, okay? Benefit number nine, this one is awesome. Strength training will work no matter how old you are. It's one of those um, cells in our body that can keep growing at any age, so it's awesome thing that we can do all through our lives. Benefit number 10, strength training can strengthen your mental health. Strength training can have a positive effect in alleviating symptoms of depression. So that's another great thing. We get those endorphins going, we fellowship with other people we're exercising with, and um, it's really helpful for that as well. And now we're going to go on to benefit 11, which I added because it's something I really want to talk about today. And it's something that we are going to try out for ourselves. So strength training may improve your balance. So balance is really important, right? Because we don't want to fall. We don't want to break a hip. Um, we want to be able to do all the kinds of things that we like to do. So according to mayoclinic.org, muscle weakness and unstable joints can contribute to loss of balance. So I think what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through some very simple balancing exercises that if you came to one of my balance classes you would do or you can do at home. So the first one is called Good Mornings and not only does it help your balance but it helps to um, loosen up your hamstrings and your glutes and, and um, help prevent lower back soreness. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you first hold your hands out like this then I'm going to have you slowly lean over, keeping a neutral back, and stare at a spot on the floor in front of you. Can you feel the stretch? Yep. This is also putting us in a position that we don't normally get into, and so it's, it's helping your balance in that way. 
by helping your muscle memory as you learn something new. I'm just gonna stand up and look to see if I can help any of you out. You can stay in that position. Good, you guys look great. Your backs are nice and straight. Very good, yep. Keep a neutral neck, which means don't let your neck hang down. Very good, good job, yeah. Good, so that is definitely something that's called good mornings. You can practice it in the morning. And if you get really good at it, that's something you can even go down and come back up because that works your erector spinae or the muscles along your back that help with your posture. So down and then back up. You can, and then, yep. <laughs> It'll be nice soft landing, yep. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's try the next one. The next one is called the single leg balance, and we're going to do this in progression, okay? So we're not just going to start trying to stand on one leg. So we're going to put our arms up first. Now we're going to pick a spot in front of us to stare straight at, and then the first thing I want you to do is just leave your toe on the ground like this. Then once you feel like you've got your balance, and that may be enough for some of you, and that's fine, I want you to slowly try to lift your leg up. Good, and it's okay if you wanna to touch back down and lift up and then touch it back down, or if you just wanna stay you know, one inch from the ground, this is something we need to get better and better at. You're not gonna be perfect at it the first time. So, if you get really good at it over time, you can try to straighten your raised leg. Okay, let's try the other leg. One leg is normally um, easier than the other, so you should practice maybe on your non-dominant leg. So again, our arms go up first. We're gonna stare at a spot in front of us, our toe on the ground, and then slowly start lifting it up. Yeah, good, good. And then you can, it, it's okay, don't be discouraged, you guys. If you need to put your hand on the wall or hang on to something, don't be discouraged. You'll be surprised the second and third days that you try it, it's gonna be getting better already, and I know this from watching people. So, very good. So it's important to, to um, do both legs, okay? Then the next one, this seems very simple. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> It's called the toe heel rock. So you're gonna place your hands on your hips. Your feet should be shoulder width apart. And then I'm gonna have you first go up on your toes and then back on your heels. Now be careful, the heels are harder than the toes. Up on the toes. Now try to get those toes off the ground, back on your heels. Yep, hang on to something if you need to, especially when you go back. Up on the toes. And you know what? If you get really good at it, you could try to pause. One, two. Then up on the toes. One, two. Back on the heels. Oh, that's a little harder. One, two. So that's something very good to practice. And then watch your posture so you're not um, bending your back. Your, your neck is neutral. Um, very good. Keep your um, tummy nice and tight. That's good. Okay. Toes are easier, right? Okay, then we have the forward leg swing. So again, hands on hips. We'll start with our right leg. You're just gonna swing it forward, touch, back, touch. Forward, now back. Now, if you don't have to put it down, that's what you're working towards. So you're working towards just being able to continuously swing it with, without foot, good, that's good. Yep, and again, stare at a spot in the wall in front of you. You'll be surprised at how, and, and don't close your eyes because that makes it a lot harder. <laughs> okay, let's try the other leg. So remember, we're just gonna try to go a little bit forward. Touch, back, touch, forward, back, okay. Now you're going to try to swing it just slowly back and forth without touching it. That's the goal ultimately, but don't be upset if you can't do that today. Okay, very good, you guys. Okay, a couple more. This one is called the lateral bend. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to start out again with our hands over our heads. Then we're going to extend one leg out to the side and lean to the other side. Now, the ultimate goal is to be able to lift this leg and just stand like this. Remember, you can keep touching it back down. Yep, or you can keep your toe down all the time. It's fine to keep your toe down. Yep, so either up like this or keep your toe down. Very good. Let's try the other side. So remember, up, look straight out ahead, neutral neck, toe out. Then if you can, lift the toe up and lean to the side. Very good. And like I said, the most important thing is to not get discouraged and to keep trying because you will be shocked. If you never try it again, it's not going to get any easier, right? <laughs> but if you keep trying it, you will be able to see a big difference and you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll see a difference. Now remember, there's lots of reasons that people might have ba balance issues. So we're specifically dealing right now with, with those related to muscle or joint weakness. So if you have any other balance issues that you're concerned with, you should consult your, your doctor about that, okay? Um, then we have the tree pose. Now this looks a little harder, but we're going to do it in steps again. So this one, our arms are out like branches on a tree, right? Then we're going to just lift up our toe and keep it on the ground. Now ultimately, we want to be able to put it up on our shin or our thigh, not directly on the knee, and hold it there. Again, look straight ahead. But remember, you start just with the toe on the ground. Just start like that. Yeah, perfect. You got it. You're doing great. Yeah, very good, you guys. Awesome. OK, let's try the other leg. So arms go up. We start with the toe. Then if that's feeling OK, we're going to lift it up and hold it. Wonderful. I think you guys are getting better already. I mean, this is a harder one, right, than the first one? And it already looks better. Great. OK, I think this might be our last one. And this is called the triangle pose. And the reason it's called the triangle is because your arm and your two feet make a triangle. So what I want you to do is stand with your feet slightly spread apart like this. And we're going to raise our arm first straight up. Now look at that fingers. They're pointing straight at the ceiling. I want them to keep pointing at the ceiling as you move down. Yeah. There you go. Good. So keep your hand up at the ceiling. Look and see your fingers. Yes, because we want to make that triangle. And you don't have to go all the way down. Look at this. This far is fine. This far is fine. Eventually, oh if you could go all the way down. I can't even put my shoes on. You're doing great. You will be able to pretty soon. <laughs> Good. Some of you are very flexible. That's excellent. So let's try it with the other side. We're going to first lift the arm up. So I like you to lift the arm up first because I don't want you to lift it over like this. It's kind of constraining that way. So if you lift it straight up, it's easier to keep it pointing straight at the ceiling. And then you're going to go down. Keep that chest nice and open, which means kind of push your shoulder blades back. And then remember, it's OK if you're here, or here, or all the way down. Can you feel the tendency to kind of flop you know, forward and backward on that one? So can you see how that would be very good, for your, very good for your balance as well? Yeah, you guys did excellent. I want to give you a big round of applause. That was great. Can you see how some of those things will be helpful if you practice them regularly? Awesome.